kind of where we are today, uh, closing literally right on the 10 day moving average. So this 392 level for tomorrow's session is gonna be an absolute uh, huge, huge deal. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Monday edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So after last week's uh, nearly 4% on all across uh, the indexes, the question was, what was the market going to do uh, for an encore? And if you guys uh, watched the, you know, the last week's uh, last weekend's uh, video, uh, there was kind of a, a big separation, a big disconnect between the growth stocks that were kind of sold now for the last couple of weeks. All the money was coming out of all these growth names and the money was flowing into names like Apple, names like uh, Microsoft, a lot of the consumer cyclicals, uh, like we talked about, for example, Colgate Palmolive uh, on the weekend up. Again, nothing sexy, but that's where the money flow enters. So the question going into today's session was, number one, can the market continue uh, its last week's dominance? But if you traded last week, you kind of know that the majority of the value from last week was all to the downside, not named Apple, right? Not named uh, Microsoft. So the question it was going, coming into the day, was Apple and Microsoft gonna bring everything else back up that was getting sold, or is everything gonna get sold finally gonna start bringing down uh, Apple and Microsoft? But especially Apple, it's had this really, really parabolic move uh, that we've been talking about, and obviously we highlighted uh, over the weekend. And when you look at the scoreboard today, it, it's not a big deal, right? When you look at the scoreboard, you see pretty much everything's down 1% all across the board, but it doesn't really represent the weakness, the aggressiveness in continuation of selling all these growth stories. And not even like the stocks, like the UPSTs of the world, the letter U's, even names that had this really huge run over the last couple of years. And we talked about on uh, NVIDIA as well. You know, these are the names that are really starting to get into the sweet spot of a lot of aggressive selling pressure. When you start looking at names like NVIDIA and you start looking uh, at names uh, like a Tesla or a stock like a Netflix, you can see how close they're all coming to the recent Lowe's channel. And if this is a situation of using Apple as a, bar a barometer, right, to see kind of the strength and weakness in tech, and the question remains is, well, if the money does continue to come out of Apple, and again, this was the leader going up, well, how are these other stocks going to survive? And that's the million dollar question. The key kind of going into tomorrow is understanding two things. Right now, the NASDAQ 100, after everything that happened yesterday, after everything that happened last week, we saw this 4% move, nearly 4% move in the NASDAQ 100, the Qs closed today right at the 10 day moving average. And that's a kind of a big deal. If you've been watching this video uh, or any of the workshops or anything, anything I've done, you, you know the importance uh, that I put in on the 10 day moving average. It's the birth of the trade. Once you close above the 10 day moving average, that's super bullish. If you close below the 10 day moving average and it confirms the next day when you got a problem on your hands. And that's kind of where we are today uh, closing literally right on the 10 day moving average. So this 392 level for tomorrow's session is gonna be an absolute uh, huge, huge deal. Because if we gap up and start losing that 392 level and start building below, again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply, then again, you have to believe in the theory that stocks trade to demand, to demand. So if we start losing this 392 level, then we got 387 and then 384, which will be a double dip test uh, to this rising 50 day moving average. That's kind of a big deal. And when you look at all the former runners, well, they're already far, you know, they're already far in front of the pack as far as weakness goes. And you could see uh, the bottom channel here on Tesla stopped here perfectly double bottom. You could see the bottom channel here in the video, right? Very, very close of taking out recent, recent lows. You could tell the bottom kind of starting to form, confirm the five day moving average. We talked about this 
uh, on the weekend video of Doc. You're trying to see the bottom of you know bottom of the channel here and the video, of course, right? And the video of the of the mall. You have this double bottom here, and if this thing confirms, it has another you know 10, 15 points uh, to the next demand zone. So yeah, I mean the bulls uh, have their work to you know have their work cut out for tomorrow. I think tomorrow. Uh, if if we gap up and start losing support, it's gonna be you know it's gonna be a pretty ugly scenario. I, I think in a weird way that the best thing that can happen to the bulls tomorrow, if we actually gap down right below the ten day moving average on the Qs and you know wash them out, trap some shorts on the bottom of the channel, reclaim the ten day moving average and start to rally. Because again, if if you don't believe in technical analysis and you avoid all these levels, where you're gonna be you're gonna be a one. Uh, in the crosshairs of what's about to happen next, and nobody wants that, right? It's not. A, it's not about uh, bull versus bear. It's, it's people. It's all about being prepared versus the unprepared. And again, I you know I could be wrong every single day, uh, the thesis wise, literally wise, uh, even on the wrong side of the market. But as long as I don't jump the gun, as long as I I you know I don't preempt the trade and forecast what's about to happen next, it's okay, right? It's okay to be. Uh, wrong theoretically, just do not be wrong financially. And the most important part is once you get all this data, right? And that's the data we talk about every single day, collecting via technical analysis, at least it's going to give us a lot more clues going into tomorrow's channel. And if you do your homework today, if you do your really good due diligence today and look at the technology space, you'll see a lot of names that are on the chopping block uh, looking aggressive to the downside. But if you look outside of the tech space and you look at names, how how really well a name like Costco held up today after Friday's uh, really big move, a consumer cyclical like a, a Colgate Palmolive has nothing to do uh, with the technology space holding up well. So there, there there's definitely names uh, that are holding up. But our, again, our focus, especially from the trading aspect, is looking for momentum average to range especially in technology. And if these stocks do start confirming, especially today's channels on macro on the queues and formerly a lot of names that are just st starting to test out previous week's lows, then you have yourself uh, a big problem. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about some names uh, that I do like uh, for tomorrow's session. I like this Colgate Palmolive. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the pivots in a second. It started taking out Friday's channel, cleared out all the supply, and now it has this whole gap to fill. If this thing starts uh, you know, getting above all this channel here, maybe you can start seeing filling a gap here all the way up to 83. Uh, this is a name you definitely want to uh, play on dips into rising 60-minute uh, support. A uh, name like Costco as well. Today was a perfect example of a stock that broke out the previous day uh, and trapped shorts on the bottom of the range, right? You see this whole 49.50 level? Again, we'll talk about the pivots in a second, but here's where bulls, you know, bulls trapped shorts, right? Eager, emotional, um, not prepared shorts. They're just thinking, well, everything's gonna go down because the market's going down. And here's an example of, again, strong stock dipping into rising 60 minute support trapping. And this thing actually went green uh, a couple of times throughout the day and held uh, Friday's gain. So very, very impressive. But if you look at the downside, again, we have to watch Tesla for tomorrow. Uh, there was pretty aggressive uh, 900 weekly call buyers coming in. And you can see from uh, you can see from the December six lows, and the reason why the December six low is so important. This is the lowest candle, right? Uh, defending the 50-day moving average. So if this candle gets validated, right, or at least confirmed, then you got a move coming to like 9:30. 909 and all the way down to fill in this gap, which could be uh, very, very aggressive. They were coming for, you know, they were coming for pretty aggressive uh, short term expiration of NVIDIA itself. And again, they were coming today for the 290s, the 285s, the 280s, and the 270 weeklies. And the reason why they're saying 270, if it confirms this whole channel here, then you have this rising support here, measure potential. Uh, 271 on the 50 day moving average. Look at Boeing. They were coming today also for the 190 weeklies. Okay. And this is the first close uh, below the 10 day moving average. When it tried to rally back, it got stuffed at the 10 day moving average. So if it starts losing this bottom channel here, you can see here the December 3rd lows 
We're pretty much correlated with today's lows. And if it starts losing that, it has a pocket of all the way to 185 to fill, uh, which could be very aggressive as well. Look at a name like ASAN. Again, here's another example of a stock blowing up into earnings, right? Blowing up into earnings, uh, dead cat bounce, now finally lost its 10, uh, lost its five day moving average. This thing is like a day away from confirming earnings lows. And if it does, and if you've kind of been watching this, this broadcast, uh, for a while you know how much i love these earnings lows uh confirmation plays once they confirm uh these earnings lows they're you know they're a week two weeks of literally drifting drifting lower and you can get some pretty aggressive uh moves to the downside especially uh if there is continuation of weakness so some really good value tomorrow uh to the downside again the bulls are going to really need to um, you know, put in some work tomorrow to start reclaiming some macro levels because if that 10 day moving average um, does get uh, violated, right? And sellers take control, then the 50 day moving average is going to be a, a retest uh, once again. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Um, again, in a weird way, today was actually, you know, pretty tamed, uh, at least in the morning. There was definitely some good value in the morning, some dips today uh, in names like Microsoft that was strong. Uh, in names like um, in names like Costco that was strong, uh, obviously the shorts today really really fell apart, and that was the most important part. How easily uh, they gave up compared to last Friday when they were still fighting over controls, and obviously when the indexes are up four percent, you know it's much easier to kind of manipulate the narrative without realizing how ugly it was. Uh, below the surface. Let's talk about uh, today's action. Uh, snow started off well, right? Uh, we talked about two areas, uh, 375 and 378 big areas needs to build. Uh, snow was super thin today, really, really thin. Uh, it went from 375 to like 377 and change. Uh, never confirmed the 378 macro. And then all of a sudden, like everything else got really, really beat down. Uh, CL 79, 75, 80. Uh, needs to build. Here was CL, took out the 79, 75, 80, uh, traded up to like 81 and a quarter within 10 cents of the highs. Really nice move here. I still like this thing uh, going higher. There was actually two areas of Microsoft. Uh, the first one was uh, 240, uh, 340, 80s for a dip, right? The first one was 240, 80s uh, for a dip, and you can see here why, right? You see this first channel here? Again, rising support. It actually went green on a day and traded all the way up to uh, 343.70s, and they got pretty much rejected at the pre-market highs, and the stock obviously uh, fell apart with everything else. Uh, TTD was pretty good. Uh, for, I, I didn't do this TTD. I was, in, I was involved with a whole bunch of other stuff, but TTD is super tight. We talked about this 99 to the upside, uh, 93 to the downside, went to like uh, 90 and change. So nice little move there. Qualcomm was pretty good today. Uh, there was really good call buying coming in uh, Qualcomm at the open. Uh, it took out the 188, took out the 89, went to 91. Actually, it was a pretty good trade considering um, how weak the market was in, in the beginning. So it took out this whole 88, took out the 90, excuse, 89 and traded all the way up to 91.30. Nice move there, like really, really nice move there on Qualcomm, and then you started seeing all the names getting weak, all the names we started talking about on the weekend video, losing their channels, uh, docu earnings bounce was short-lived basically, right? Uh, anything under, it was supposed to be under, uh, 142.50, uh, 142.50, 142, if it builds below, can start to move back to its earnings lows. So here was docu, right? So here was docu. Again, here's a perfect example of losing the five day moving average, took out the 42, closed right at the lows of 39 and change. If this thing starts uh, confirming this 39 level tomorrow, I do believe uh, there will be a test to uh, the earnings lows. And that's when the stock, uh, that's when the trade really starts uh, from the 131 area. Uh, Nvidia got destroyed, absolutely destroyed. 298.50, 298 if it builds below can flush more. Uh, Nvidia got, as the kids say, got wrecked. Here was the 298, went all the way down to the 280. And now it's staring at macro in the face and this thing loses this 280. You're gonna see a move to the 250 day moving average. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Tesla for experienced traders obviously never got the 1024 because now we're looking uh, back to the downside. Uh, guys, VRTX continues to look very, very well. Um, Stock is just not going down. And it's not going up, but it's not going down. If this thing could finally get above this 209 level, 
know, some of these bios have been holding up. Maybe this thing goes. It's holding up incredibly, incredibly well. It's just a matter of time there. Uh, Costco, here's again, here's a perfect example of stocks trapping, right? Costco for experienced traders only, 549, 550 bounce potential into rising support. Uh, obviously, 562 needs to build. And here was Costco. Here was the five, here was the 60 minute support. You see this whole uh, 549, 550 area? This is where this is where emotional sellers got trapped by technical buyers. And this thing went almost green in the day. Beautiful bounce. I mean, really, really beautiful bounce. Uh, near, you know, nearly an eight, nine dollar bounce on Costco. Uh, nice move there. Starbucks uh, still not anywhere close to. Um, and here comes Qualcomm, right? Take on the way up. Uh, 191 on deck, and that was supply. Uh, 8970s coming. Uh, I didn't expect 280s to come, but it sold off much more there. You know, nice bounce, could go green, it did go green. Uh, NVIDIA, perfect move to the 290 area. Uh, and here, and here was it. This was, you know, this was the one uh, that pretty much uh, gave the stamp of approval for the, for the selling uh, in the afternoon. Uh, you know, Apple, 178.30, 178. If it builds below, uh, can confirm the blow off. I don't want to use the word blow off top. I don't want to use that. Had a beautiful majestic run. Uh, Bulls did great. It just a near short term pause. Let's use the word pause. But anyway, 178.30, 178. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, I gave about a dollar move initially. And then finally in the afternoon, uh, it gave it up. You could see here, it finally gave it up in the afternoon and closed right on the five day moving average. And guess what? That five day moving average is obviously going to be important to, to Apple uh, for tomorrow as well for, for the bulls to defend and obviously the sellers uh, to try to take control. So again, market's a little bit aggressive right now. Uh, we are coming up on some key levels. Uh, if you are new to technical analysis, uh, you know, dive right in, you know, fall in love with it. The faster you fall in love uh, with technical analysis, the, the easier mentally uh, you can digest information. And it's all about collecting data and making logical choices on the data you collect. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow.